Hello guys, welcome to another calculus video. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at this cool differential equation which results from a pretty common physics problem. Uh, so we're not going to take the physics interpretation of this because there is another way to do it uh, the way a physics student would do it, but we're going to take the just straight on differential equations math way of solving it. So let's jump into it. Now before we want to start, I just want to uh, say that I'm probably going to make a lot of mistakes that I'm going to have to fix in editing later. So I'm just apologizing in advance. All right, let's get started. So this is the problem. I, this is not the exact phrasing of it. It was given to me by a friend. Uh, he got it from his physics teacher. So it's basically we have some object with a mass lowercase m that's falling towards the earth with mass uppercase m. It starts at a distance of r0. And at a certain point, it's going to reach distance r1. Now, all we need to do is figure out how long it takes to get there. So we're going to do this using a function, y of t, which will represent the distance between the object and the Earth based on time. So first of all, y of 0 equals r0. And since the object starts at rest, y prime of 0 equals 0. Now, our differential equation. Now, since it's in space, the only uh, force that's being exerted on this object is gravity. So force equals the mass of both objects, so m, m times the gravitational constant over the distance squared, and the distance is y. Now, one thing we want to note is that uh, acceleration times mass equals force, which means that acceleration equals force over mass. And since that mass is just our little m, we can just take that out, and this will become acceleration. One last thing before we can make this into our differential equation. Acceleration is the second derivative of position, so we can write this as y double prime. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this gm with k, since that will remain there the whole time. So gm equals k. And the last thing we have to do is we didn't give this force any particular direction, but since we're accelerating in the direction of the Earth, which is um, in the direction of decreasing position, this is going to be a negative sign right here. So let's go ahead and solve this differential equation. Now the first step we're going to do is a cool little trick for second order nonlinear differential equ equations of the form y double prime equals f of y. We're going to multiply by y prime on both sides and then we're going to integrate with respect to t. So on the left side, we're going to be doing a substitution u equals y prime, and then du equals uh, y double prime dt, right? And so this is actually just du, and so we'll just end up with u squared over 2 plus c, or y prime squared over 2. I'll leave the plus c out for now. And on this other side, we're going to be just doing u equals y and du equals y prime dt, or this. So we're going to end up with the integral of negative k over u squared, which is just k over u. And u is just y. So k over y plus c. Now we're going to plug in our initial conditions. So in the initial conditions, we have y prime is 0. So 0 equals k over y. y is r0 plus c. So clearly here, c equals negative k over r0. So we'll plug that in here. Next, we're going to multiply by 2, and then we're going to take the square root. Now, one thing I want to point out here is that k is positive, y is positive, r0 is positive, and y is always less than or equal to r0. So that means on the inside of the square root, everything will be positive, which is good, because that means our square root is valid. However, if we take a look at y prime, the object will ever will only ever be moving towards the Earth. It's never going to actually be moving away from the Earth. So that means that y prime can actually just be negative this square root because the square root's value is always positive. And so we have a nice setup for a separable differential equation. And let's go ahead and solve it. So to separate the variables, this is going to become dy over dt. And then we're going to end up with 1 over square root 1 over y minus 1 over r0 dy equals square root 2k t 
dt. All right, a uh, negative square root 2k dt. Then what we're going to do is integrate both sides. And let's continue on the next slide. So the integral of negative 2k dt is just negative, or sorry, negative square root 2k t plus c, right? This is going to be equal to the integral of 1 over square root 1 over y minus 1 over r0 dy. So the first thing we're going to do is multiply by square root r0 in the top and bottom. So on the top, on the top, we're going to end up with square root r0 right here. And then in here, this is just going to become 1. And this is going to become r0 over y. Then we're going to multiply by y in the top and bottom. So we're going to end up with y on the top. And this is going to become squared in the square root. So we're going to end up with y squared. And this is just going to become r0, y. All right. Now let's complete the square. So we have r0, y minus y squared. We're going to do trig substitution, which is the same as negative y squared minus r0, y plus r0 squared over 4. And then we're also going to have on the outside r0 squared over 4 since this is really being subtracted because of this negative sign. And this bit on the right here, this just becomes r0 squared over 4 minus y minus r0 over 2 squared. OK, that's nice. So the substitution we're going to want to make is y minus r0 over 2 equals r0 over 2 sine theta. Classic sub sub trig substitution. Now, one thing that I want to point out is to do this problem, if we substitute cosine theta instead of sine theta, it's actually going to work out a lot more nicely for us just because I already know the final answer. But uh, in this case, we're just going to keep the regular substitution. So that means that dy equals r0 over 2 cosine theta d theta. And so making this substitution, we're going, I'm going to bring this all the way to the outside. So, or actually, no, I'll leave that in there. So the first thing I want to do is I want to subtract r0 over 2 and then add it back here. So we're going to end up with square root r0 integral of, now y minus r0 over 2 is just r0 over 2 sine theta plus r0 over 2 all over. Now in this square root, we're going to have this, but this inside part is just r0, uh, r, r0 squared over 4 sine theta. So the entire inside of the square root is going to be square root of r0 squared over 4 cosine squared theta, because we're going to end up with 1 minus sine squared times r0 squared over 4, and that's going to be this is the same thing as cosine squared. And then on the top, we're going to have r0 over 2 cosine theta d theta. Now, um, we can cancel this, abs this um, square root here with this and this and that. And the reason we can do this is usually when we take the square root um, of something squared, we end up with the absolute value. But when we're talking about integration, we can always choose a domain for theta such that cosine of theta is always greater than zero. No matter what situation of theta we're, we're looking at, cosine theta can always be greater than zero. So that means we can always uh, cancel those absolute value bars when we're doing in indefinite integration and definite integration as well. So what we're going to end up with is this is going to cancel with this exactly. And so we're going to end up with r0 to the 3 halves over 2 times the integral of sine theta plus 1 d theta. OK, now the next step here is just to integrate. Uh, I'm sorry about the handwriting there. So we're going to end up with r0 to the 3 halves over 2, and then negative cosine theta plus theta. Now, of course, using this definition right here, we're going to end up with theta equals inverse sine of, quick maths, 2y over r0 uh, 
minus 1. Right? So the first thing I want to note here um, is that when we take the cosine of the inverse sine of something, that's just going to end up being, just using the basic Pythagorean identities, it's going to end up just being the square root of 1 minus that thing squared. So this is what we end up with right here. Now I do want to note that there's definitely some simplification that can be made with this. By multiplying it out, we'll end up with a simpler square root. And also using Pythagorean identities and double angle identities, we can simplify this. But I'm just going to keep this in the simplest form that we got from integration. So let's plug in our initial conditions. We know that when t equals 0, y equals r0, right? So let's plug that in. The left side is just going to be c. And the right side is going to be r0 to the 3 halves over 2, blah, 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 blah. This bit is just going to be, the square root part is going to go to 0. But this inverse sine part is going to be pi over 2. So c equals pi over 2 times this, right? And so if we move c over to the other side, we're going to get negative square root 2k. t equals r0 to the 3 halves over 2. I'm going to cancel, or actually, no, I'll, I'll wait. Then we're going to end up with plus inverse sine of 2y over r0 minus 1, um, and then minus pi over 2. Now, it's pretty simple to see that since sine of pi over 2 minus x equals cosine x, and cosine pi over 2 minus x equals sine x, that inverse sine of x plus inverse cosine of x equals pi over 2. So this is just going to reduce to um, negative cosine inverse of 2y over r0 minus 1. And as I mentioned before, this can be simplified as well um, using double angle identities, but I'm just going to leave it as it is. So we're going to end up here with negative cosine inverse of 2y over r0 minus 1. And then we have a negative sign on both sides, so I'm just going to remove that everywhere. And this is going to be our final answer. t equals r0 3 halves 2. I'll replace um, 2gm right there times square root 1 minus 2y over r0 minus 1 squared plus cosine inverse 2y over r0 minus 1. Now, the only thing that's left to do is we're looking for t when y equals r1. So all we have to do is plug in y equals r1 everywhere, and that will give us rt. So this is our final answer. Another thing I want to mention once again is that there are many equivalent forms to this answer. This is not uh, the question originally said, show that it's equal to such and such answer, and this is actually different than the solution that they had, because there's a lot of simplifications that can be made, but I'm just going to leave it in this form because this is uh, the simplest, and I don't want to make this video too long with some pointless effort. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. I love being able to take uh, calculus and differential equations and integrals and all these different things and apply them to a real-life situation, because I just think it makes for such a great time and it really shows the reason why calculus is so important because it really does describe everything in the universe. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.